Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get up and running with Safari for Mac OS. Most of the features that I'll be going over will also apply to Safari for iOS as well. I'm currently running Safari version 14.0.2 and you can check which version of Safari you're running by going up to the Safari menu in the top left and then clicking on About Safari. Safari is a web browser just like Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Mozilla Firefox. To get started with Safari, let's take a look at how the address bar works. So the address bar is up here at the very top, and from here, we can enter a website address and press return or enter to visit the website. Alternatively, you can also search Google directly from the address bar as well. Notice that at the top left of the browser, we also have the back and forward buttons that are pretty standard in most browsers. Before we move forward, I just want to mention that I'll be going at a pretty quick pace in this video to get as much information in as possible. Remember, you can always pause and rewind if you need to, and it may be helpful to follow along using your Safari web browser. Okay, so we know how to visit websites and search Google. Let's take a look at how we can use multiple tabs in Safari. You can open a new tab just by clicking on the plus icon up here at the top right of the browser. If you like keyboard shortcuts, you could also press Command and T to open up a new tab or Command W to close the current tab. So right now we have two tabs open. You can see I've got this Start Page tab and then I have this Anson Alex Search tab. So we can just click on the different tabs to go back and forth. So you know I could go back to my website here and have my website open in this tab but I still have my search open in this other tab. To close a tab, you can just hover over the tab and click on the X button. You can also press Command and W if you like keyboard shortcuts. So right now we have two tabs open, and by browsing with multiple tabs, we can keep as many websites open at once as we'd like. Like in other browsers, we can also change the order of our open tabs simply by dragging and dropping them in the position that we'd like them to be in. So we could have 10 tabs open at once right now, and then I could just drag them in any order that I'd like. You can also view all of your tabs at once by clicking on this double square icon here at the top right corner. And you'll notice that it shows all of your tabs. If you had even more, you could scroll down this page, and then you can click on the one that you'd like to look at. I find this a very helpful feature when you have a lot of tabs open all at the same time. Okay, so let's talk about bookmarks in Safari. Bookmarks allow you to easily access sites without having to enter their web address in your address bar. To bookmark a website, we first need to access the site that we'd like to bookmark, which, you know, we're on my website right now, so that works. And then what we need to do is click on the share icon up here at the top right. You'll notice from here we have the option to add bookmark. In the window that pops up, we can decide where we want to put the bookmark. Now, right now, we only have two options, bookmarks and favorites. Favorites is essentially a pre-created folder inside of our main bookmarks folder. And that main bookmarks folder will store all of our bookmarks. In a minute, I'll show you how you can create your own custom folders inside of the main bookmarks folder so you can more easily sort your bookmarked websites. For now, let's just add this one to favorites. We could also change the name of the bookmark if we wanted to, and we could add a description, but I'm not going to do that for now. I'm just going to click on add. I just want to mention, if you like keyboard shortcuts, you can also bookmark a page by pressing Command D on the keyboard. Now, let's take a look at accessing our bookmarks. We have a few different ways to do this. First of all, we can click on this book icon up here at the top left of the browser. You'll notice that a sidebar appears. And in this sidebar, we have all of our bookmarks listed and the folders if we had any, but we only have one folder. So let's just drop this folder down. So you'll notice that the bookmark we just added is now listed here at the bottom of the favorites folder. And there are a bunch of bookmarks that are already in here. These are just pre-created bookmarks uh, that Apple put in there. So uh, at any time with any bookmark, you can always right click on it and you could delete it. So honestly, I'm not going to Yahoo. You know, a lot of these, I could probably delete them out, but that's up to you. Now here in the bookmark sidebar, we can also create folders by just right clicking in the empty space and selecting new folder. So I could just call this like tech websites. And then I could click and drag this bookmark into the tech websites folder. I could close up my favorites. And so you can see it's now listed there. Now I can drag this bookmark around however I'd like. So if I had other folders, I could drag it to other folders as well. And when we go to add a new bookmark, we'll now see uh, the tech websites folder as an option for us to add this bookmark to. 
So uh, we only saw the bookmarks in the favorites option before we would now have a third option, tech websites, and you can create as many folders as you'd like. Alternatively, to access a bookmark page, we can just click on the bookmarks menu up here at the top and you'll notice we have all of our uh, bookmarks folders listed here. So here's the page that we bookmarked. If we had any bookmarks that weren't in a folder, they were just in this general folder, uh, the general bookmarks folder, but not one of the subfolders, they'd just be listed here. You wouldn't have to go to the folder first. So that's another way to access your bookmarks. I'd also like to show you one more way that will really open up some customization options for your Safari experience. If you right click on the toolbar in Safari, you'll notice that we have the option to customize toolbar. After selecting that option, a window appears that allows us to customize our entire Safari toolbar. Notice that there's a bookmarks button here, and I could just click and I could drag this bookmarks button anywhere I'd like up here in Safari. So I could put it over here, but if I didn't want it on the left, I could drag it over here to the right. Uh, so Safari really allows users a lot of freedom in how they customize their browsing experience, and that's one of the things that I really like about Safari. There are also a lot of other options in here as well that you can take a look at. For instance, you may want to add a home button. So you've got this home icon right here. You can just put that in our browser as well, and later on in a few minutes, I'll show you how you can set a home page. Uh, so anytime you click on that home button, it would take you to your set home page. Again, I'll let you take a look at the other options in here. So let's go ahead and let's close this. We'll click done. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's click back on this share icon up here at the top right. We had a few other options here. First of all, we could have added this page to our reading list instead of bookmarks. There isn't really a big difference. You can access the reading list over here in the bookmark sidebar, just like bookmarks. It's just this other tab with the glasses. If we added any pages to our reading list, they'd be listed here. The main difference is basically how people use it. Generally, people use the reading list for items that they want to look at, but they don't plan on bookmarking forever. And then bookmarks are generally used for saving web pages for the long term. Let's go back over here to the share menu. We had a few other options. Notice that from here, we also could have emailed this page to someone. We could send it via messages, airdrop, and a few other options as well. I want to mention at any time, if you want to reload a page, you can go up here to the address bar to the right side of it and click on this arrow and that will reload the current page. That's an important one to know how to do in any browser, I think. If you want to see your browser history, you can go up here to the history menu, and it will show you all the pages that you've been to. So we've only been to these two right now. Uh, so that's a good way to see your history. You can also clear your history from here as well. So you could just click on clear history, and then you can choose the time frame that you'd like to clear the history for. So we could say, you know, um, just all history and then hit clear history if we wanted to. If you click up here on the view menu, we have some more customization options that I'll kind of let you take a look at, but I know one popular one is to show the favorites bar. So if we click on that, you'll notice that our toolbar up here at the top kind of expands and we now have all these links that have our favorite bookmarks. Uh, so if I moved my website back into favorites, you'll notice that now it appears up here as well. If I delete any of these websites out of favorites, they'll also be deleted up here. So that's a really good way to just easily, you know, one click and access a website. Just make sure that you're showing the favorites bar by going here to the view menu. And if you wanted to then hide it, you could now hide it from the view menu as well. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and close our bookmarks. We'll do that by just clicking back on the book icon. So now let's talk about customizing some Safari preferences like setting our home page and choosing which page we'd like to see when Safari first opens. To access our preferences, we're going to go to the Safari menu and then click on Preferences. Notice that right off the bat, we have the option to choose what Safari opens with. So from here, we could choose a new window or a popular option is to choose all of the windows from the last session. So it'll open up whatever you had open when you last accessed Safari and closed it down. We can also decide how we'd like new windows to open. Uh, so we can choose the Start page, which is essentially a page that lists all of your favorites. It was the first page that we saw when I started this tutorial. Uh, it's just your favorites, the, the bookmarks that are in that favorites folder. Alternatively, we could also choose home page. Uh, we can also choose what new tabs open with, so we could choose home page. Um, by the way, to open a new window in Safari, I just do the Command N shortcut. Uh, and then down here, we have the option to actually set our home page. So if you have a particular page that you'd like to see when Safari first opens up, go ahead and enter it in here now. And uh, you could also just access the page and then come in here to your preferences and hit set to current page. Now I'm not going to go over every single preference here in Safari, but I do recommend that you take a look around in here on your own to see all that is possible. Let's take a look at a couple other important ones. 
First of all, we have the Passwords tab. And when you access a website in Safari and you first log in, Safari is going to ask you if you want to save your username and password, kind of like you know other browsers. If you do decide to save it, you can always come in here to the Safari Preferences, access the Passwords tab, and this is where you'd be able to modify any of your saved login information, uh, view passwords, that sort of thing. Uh, if you click on the Search tab, you can set your default search engine. So right now it's Google, and I'm going to leave it as Google, but you could change that if you wanted to. If you go to the Privacy tab, you can clear all of your cookies and clear your cache in here by clicking on manage website data and then you know you can click remove all and remove all of your website browsing data if you click on the extensions tab we don't have anything in here right now but you can click on this more extensions button and it brings you into the app store at the safari extensions section where you could browse some cool little extensions to enhance your browsing experience with safari Okay, so that should cover all of the primary features of using the Safari web browser. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for now. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.